Welcome back guys, thank you very much for joining me. Today we've got another tool review and it's another Evolution tool. It's the 185mm multi-material cutting chop saw or the Rage 4. Now I've been really looking forward to getting this because this saw, from what I've heard, what I've read, it's quite compact, it's quite easy, it's quite light, it's quite useful, it cuts multi-materials. This saw is hopefully going to mean that I can take this on site without worrying about taking my mitre saw, my circular saw, again they, they're multi-material saws as well. But with this being such a light and compact unit, I'm really hoping it means I can replace those and I don't need to worry about those anymore. I can just take this one saw and have done with it. So without further ado, let's crack open the box and let's have a look inside, shall we? Come on! So we've got our instructions just there, which we always need to keep those guys and please refer to them when installing, changing components and so on. We've got spare parts, we've got allen keys, we've got brushes, we've got rubber grips. So we'll find out what all that lot's for in a second. Woo! There she is, look at that bad boy. Yeah. chain which of course the chain holds this down so all you do is press on the handle release the chain and lift it up that releases your chop saw so we're going to quickly go into a specification guys go into a demonstration then we'll go into some final thoughts at the end as we always do so we saw that little pack earlier on in the box now what you get in there is your dust extraction port adapter you get your speed handle you get your rubber vice jaw protector and of course all your allen keys what you'll need to do maintenance on the tool Plus you get some spare brushes, which I think is very generous to be honest with you. What I will say first is make sure you read the instructions because there is a lot of information in here and it's all for your benefit. There is certain ways to cut certain materials and not a lot of people realise this and they seem to be cutting it wrong. So I just feel like this is a vital point to point out. Always read the manufacturer's instructions when you can. So taking a look at the base plate, it's fairly simple and straightforward. You can either do your straight cuts or up to a 45 degree cut. So what we're going to do is undo the locking handle here like so. We're going to drop this down and it locks itself into 45 degrees. This goes up in 15 increments. So of course you've got 15, you've got 13, of course you've got 45 right at the end like so. So you can obviously chop your piece fairly fast and fairly simple. Now the, there is an additional benefit to this. You do have two further bolts, one there and one there. What that means is you can move this back and you can move this back and you can gain an additional probably 30 mil on your cut and it just covers that little bit more. So you know just an additional 30 mil or so on that wider cut and you can get away with it just by moving these two bolts here. Very straightforward with the allen keys provided. So we're just going to lock that in place there nice and simply and we'll crack on with some cuts. Going over to the specifications, it's 1250 watt, it's got a max cut of 97 millimeters, it's got a trigger switch, it's fan cooled motor, replaceable brushes, hard start, workpiece vise, soft ergonomic grip handle, light and compact, the blade diameter is 185 millimeters, the disc ball size is 20 millimeters, it's got a three year manufacturer's guarantee, a max box cut length of 97 millimeters, a max box cut width of 46 millimeters, it's got a no load speed of 3500 RPM, of course it's 9.1 kilogram and it's 230 volts, and of course it comes with a 20 tooth multi-purpose blade. So what we've got first guys is some wood with nails in it. Now these nails are quite a large gauge, this is what I've knocked together, not what Evolution has sent me. So I'm quite interested to see how quickly and how efficiently it's going to go through this. Let's give it a go. Oh my god, how easy was that? That was ridiculous. That was a lot easier than any of the other saws I've got. So now we're going to go and do a 45 degree cut. This is just on a piece of wood. I just want to see how it forms really. Wow. I'm quite impressed with that. That's a, quite a clean cut for a chop saw. I'm very happy. So next up we're going to go for some stud channeling, quite simple, quite easy, we'll see how it goes.
quite a clean cut on that end. Quite a decent cut on that end too. Tick. So now we're just going to go and cut for some uh, mild steel. We'll line it up like the instructions tells us to. Do it correctly. Let's see how it performs. Very clean and it's not even hot to touch again like the other saws. Extremely easy to use and a nice clean cut. If we look on here, again, very nice. Hardly any burrs whatsoever. Next up we've got some nice mild steel box section. Again, same sort of gauge so it should be quite a piece of cake. Slightly warm to touch, just like the other one. Not bad at all though, not bad at all. Next up, some mild steel plate. Blazed it. Next up, we've got some 22mm copper. It's a bit rough, but if you forgot your pipe slices, it'll be perfectly fine. And last but not least, we're going to finish off with some nice and easy PVC pipe. Lovely that is. I really like this saw. I really like it. Hands down. This is the final thoughts, but I really, really like this saw. The fact that it's light, it's compact, it only weighs 9.1 kilogram, and it just seems like it performs really well. If, if I was being picky. Now this is if I was being picky. The only thing that I'm not keen on because I'm used to obviously using mitre saws and everything else, not necessarily chop saws like this, but again, it's a different class. So you kind of have to accept that. If I was being picky, I don't like the fact that the head can just pivot down like this. I would like a stop, a lock, a locking mechanism. But either way, you can't put your hand in there when you've lowered it down anyway. You also have to depress the safety button before the trigger will even engage. So really, I can see why they haven't put one on but that's just me being really picky. I love the fact that you have to use the vise because a lot of tradesmen that I work with on sites, again on, on mitre saws, chop saws, they never seem to use any sort of safety vise, any grip, any holding piece or anything. I like to see um, people hold or support their work correctly. And this chop saw makes you do that. You have to secure your work before you can use it. First looking at it, I wasn't sure what to expect or what to really think of this chain. But to be fair, it, quite, it goes quite well. It's, it's, you know, it's just there to hold it. It's there to do its job. It's there to hold it in place so you can pick it up and off you go to your next job. Um, you can even wrap the cable up, put it through the chain and secure the chain and it'll hold your cable in place instead of wrapping it around the whole machine. So all in all, I, I, Evolution have really turned me into a fan. I've been using quite a few different chop saws, circular saws on site over this last past week or so, over the last past fortnight. And in comparison to major brands, that you know, they hold their own. In some cases, even better. So I'm very excited to say that next week I'll be back at work and I'll be putting this saw through its paces properly. And it's definitely earned its way into my van. So I hope this has helped you guys. Thank you very much for watching. If it has helped you, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next video.